This conference will now be recorded. Baldos? Here. Thunden? Here. Kostalek? Here. Oh, please rise for the clerk. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry, sir, I wasn't there to poke you. Just to give everyone an overview, some of you are brand new and haven't um, been here for a CIP meeting before. So uh, the kind of order of business should be in front of you. Um, we will all be presenting our, our new items so we're not going to go through every item we're only going to go through the new ones unless of course you have a question um, if you do have questions please feel free to interject through uh, we'll try and be brief because we have so many um, but definitely we'll, we want your feedback and we want you to ask questions so until mm -hmm. could we back it up one step and just yeah. ask if there's any public comment oh sure any public comment Okay. Yeah. Online either. Nope. Thank you. Um, so um, you have the, the purpose in front of you and, and your expectations there. Um, asking questions is certainly one of them. And uh, after presentations, we'll we'll take a vote on on the CIP. So we'll kick it off with uh, the DDA and Gentry. You don't have to, Ann. Oh, I can stay here. Yeah, perfect. Um, so I'm Ann Gentry with the DDA. Um, I think most of you I've, I've seen before. Um, so as far as our new projects for this year, so one of the new additions was corridor improvements. Um, so this could be used towards banner replacement, lighting upgrades, um, trees, kind of those general streetscaping needs, um, especially as you know, hopefully we'll be moving forward with the boundary expansion. It could be used that or it could be used towards needs in our existing district. So that is one of the new ones for this year. Um, one of the changes from last year was the historic preservation activities entry. Montiel, I think you probably talk about it in yours, um, but that will give us some flexibility with having a you know greater historic preservation strategy um, for downtown. Um, and then as far as just priorities for this next year, in addition to our economic development fund and facade grant program, we have a grant for our Fresh Waves mural project. So this next year, um, that number looks higher than it usually is. Um, so that one's the public art entry. Alleyway improvements also is a top priority. So hopefully you're hearing from me in the next few months about a plan for a more year round closure of that alleyway. Um, and then a Culligan Plaza contribution as well. We have kind of as a placeholder for making some type of contribution to that project as it moves along. Um, and then planters and bike racks as well has been an ongoing project that we're hoping to continue moving forward with this year. To add more bike racks that match the new blue ones and then update planters that we rent out to businesses as well. Sam, any questions for Ann, Greg? Yeah, I have one. I, I noticed when I went through all the projects that under DDA you have Culligan Plaza. But when I went into parks or anywhere, there was no other mention of Culligan Plaza, even though it's certainly been in the paper a lot in that. And so I figured whether it's a long-term project or one that it would at least be mentioned, because uh, if you do apply for grants, it's always good to have it in the CIP. 
uh, you know, and it's that I, I thought it might be listed under parks, but it is not. I'll, I'll take it if somebody doesn't. <laughs> um, it's, well, uh, it's funded uh, in part by ARPA funding, which is already programmed, and it's also funded uh, through uh, the the foundation, the bank foundation. So it's there's, it's funded in both those locations, and it's not um, in the CIP because it's it's funded right now. So we're going to see what we can do about raising additional funds to supplement what we have, but that's that's where it's at right now. Is it's it's in it's in the fund right now, as opposed to being planned for in the CIP later. Okay. Any other questions? Um, <clears throat> just a quick question. Since you mentioned the alley, um, we've been kind of playing back and forth a couple of years, doing different things as far as temporarily closing that alley. You know the one I'm talking about. I don't know how to describe it, but you know, um, is there is there a more long-term plan already planned? Something that establishes that what we've done is going to be permanent, or I just wondered kind of where we're at. Yeah. So in it was right before the holidays, we had a meeting. Rachel, Steve was there. I think Andy or so was too. And then those business owners around the alleyway just to talk about how it went last year and what the plan is for this year. So we haven't like developed anything formal, but the the idea was is that you know the business owners love it. It's safer to keep it closed. So as long as we can you know get council support and then also work with like engineering and DPW for some of those more like longer term mm -hmm. needs and like having bollards instead of just the concrete blocks, snow removal is going to be a question. Um, so the intent is, you know, making a request to have it be year round closed, um, but we haven't like prepared that necessarily to present yet. Yeah, and then this amount um, that's in here could go towards either some of those longer term needs or like adding more planters since I really like those or different tables that might be a little bit more flexible to put in there. Okay. All right, so I will go next from a planning standpoint. Uh, so you'll see that the zoning ordinance update is in there again this year. I did carry that over into this coming year because we may need to extend that. We are making progress, um, but there's still a lot to do. So we might, might not use all of the funds that we had allocated for this current year, and some of those will push into next year. So that's why that is still there. Um, one new one is the ADA assessment. So we're looking at doing a disability assessment throughout the city um, that would be focused on our public buildings, our election locations, um, potentially our website, as well as maybe some streets and intersections, things like that. So we're right now just kind of developing the scope of what that could look like. We have a meeting with an assessment company um, this week, and we also had a discussion with someone local here that lives in the Spruce area on some disability concerns that she has. So um, it was a really good conversation and um, we have allocated funds there. Um, for that, we really don't know. That was really just a swag of, I have no idea what this is gonna cost. <laughs> so I'm gonna put, you know, kind of a ballpark estimate in there. So we'll have a better idea of what that should be in the next, I would say, few weeks. Um, and then the next one is the National Register of Historic Places listing. So. Um, to Anne's point, um, looking at more uh, historical focus for downtown specifically, we were awarded a, uh, the Thunder Bay Theater was awarded a um, grant uh, for uh, a, um, a, a grant through the State Historic Preservation Office. And part of that grant is a listing with the National Register of Historic Places. And so um, with that, you kind of present your case why we think our district that we're looking at is significant and there's a study that goes behind that so that's what we are um, looking at adding funds to that part of the grant dollars can go to that we're also looking at options for our historic district study committee to do some of that work so we can limit the expense as much as possible um, and we'll we'll know more about that in the next few weeks as well we're surveying some different um, companies right now that can help us with that. Um, the rec plan update is a new one as well. So that plan is going to be um, 
needs to be updated in a few years. Um, but one of the things that we're looking at is partnering with the county uh, because the county is starting to get more involved and is looking to do a rec plan as well. So it makes sense for us to partner with them and have kind of a joint review of both rec plans. So that's what that one is. And we also put in a placeholder for EV infrastructure. We're adding that into our zoning ordinance right now and looking at language for that. There are a lot of grants out there, so we don't know that there will be any costs for us because of the grant, but if there are some minimal expenses, we wanted to add something in for that. There is certainly interest from different parties and adding EV downtown specifically, so that's why we've added that in. Questions? I have a question for one that you didn't talk about, but the, the River Center. Mm -hmm. You haven't mentioned here under planning the large expenditure a year from now, and then under parks it's listed with a big expenditure, I think in that same year, plus it's also listed under long term, mm -hmm. an even bigger amount of money being spent. And I was just trying to, and when I read the individual sheets, it's, it was a little fuzzy in terms of what they all represent. So the River Center um, on the planning side, we have been allocating $5,000 a year for the River Center for the last several years. That will continue. Uh, we're intending for that to continue. The additional $150,000 next year is uh, for a grant that we received and those funds would in theory be allocated next year and that's for the pavilion and bathrooms. Um, and then the long range is still kind of that, you know, in the future, possibly if we have the full-blown river center, what could that look like? It's going to take a lot. There's a lot of dollars. <laughs> yeah. So. And is that different than from uh, the, the one I think under parks where it shows like not the first year, but the second year, $2 million being expensive? Does it have something in there? That would have been for us in case we were going to pursue that SPARC grant. Oh, okay. That would have been when the SPARC grant we figured would have been the $2 million would have been part of that if we were going to pursue a SPARC grant for the first time. So those aren't, those aren't general fund dollars. Those are dollars that may come in through yes. grants and things. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so we wouldn't expect those to be to even happen if if grants don't come, or come very close. Right. Okay. Um, the only other thing I was going to mention was the rec plan. We talked at IG Intergovernmental Council maybe a year or two ago, and there was kind of a consensus that a lot of the townships do are due for um, rec plan updates. So I just encourage you to maybe reach out to each one of them. Uh, as it gets closer to see if they want to, uh, however, share the costs or or however that works. Okay. Share I can, I'm sorry to interrupt. This is Rachel. <laughs> sorry I couldn't be there in person. Um, that's something that the county is coordinating, and there are townships involved in that already. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Chris, uh, you mentioned Spark. What is the what is SPARC grant? The SPARC grant is the recreation money that the state of Michigan is allocated through their ARPA funding. So it's the ARPA funding okay. at the state level. Okay. And why is it we decided not to apply for it? She has to come up with the entire match and the maximum is a million dollars and she can come up with the other million dollars okay. to do the other work of that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no other questions, we'll move on to fire. Uh, Rob Edmonds, Fire Chief for the Alpena Fire Department. Uh, there's basically three changes from um, the last CIP. One you'll find is line number 10, which is fire engine replacement of uh, engine 123. Um, we moved that up in the CIP. Uh, we're starting to have some aging problems with the truck that we have now. Um, it's getting to a point where we really need to look at replacing it. Um, we're looking at 24 to 36 month build time on a new truck. Find something that's more stock. Um, we are, if we don't replace that truck in the near future, it's going to require about a $35,000 pump rebuild on what is essentially a 27 year old fire truck. So that is a big thing for us. We moved it up not only in cost, but we moved it up in the CIP request um, to this fiscal year. The next two things that we have uh, turnout gear uh, for $112,000. 
other reason we needed to move that up and the Ward Diesel system is my OSHA Part 74 was revised this last October. We put some unf unfunded mandates towards the fire service. Um, our gear now has a 10-year shelf life on it. Um, if you read down there a little bit, we've got 21 sets of turnout gear and pants um, that are basically out of date. And I can tell you some of those are 17, 18 years old. So this is this is a MIOSHA requirement that we need to put in funding for this. Um, so that's what the turnout gear is for. <clears throat> the Ward Diesel exhaust system, um, again under Part 74, we need to have a, an exhaust capture system on our diesel trucks, and we have two ambulances left that do not have. Um, actually, it's the rescue and an ambulance that do not have the Ward Diesel um, capturing system. Basically, what it's for is to reduce the carcinogens that are given off due to diesel exhaust, but that is a requirement by MIOSHA as well. So. Um, so for the most part, those are those are the three major changes that we're looking for in this CIP request. Is there money in the uh, equipment fund for the fire truck? I'm being told. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually thinking about um, committing some of the general fund balance for that project. That was always an issue was the, the cost of the of it is, and, I, and I'll go one step further because the tower truck, which is 29 years old, we're also starting to find some issues with that. Um, and you're talking, you basically can be talking $2 million to replace that truck. Um, I can't tell you with engine 123, we had to find a control module for the uh, shifting on the truck. There was only one left in the country that was new. So we're starting to run out of parts for that truck as well for that cabin chassis model. So, um, and it's it's time to replace it just due to the age of it. So. Hey, Eric. All right, um, Eric Camp. I think I know most of you, some new faces I don't recognize. I'm the new police chief. I have three new projects to go over, starting with line number 78, which is active shooter vest. So we currently have active shooter vests that go in the patrol cars, but we do not have enough of them for every officer. So um, in a scenario like that, where we had an active shooter, we're gonna have a large response and we do not have enough vests to give every officer to go inside of an active shooter incident right now. Now there's a difference, if you don't know the difference between an active shooter vest and a regular vest like I'm wearing now, it's just the level of protection that provides a much stronger level of protection for the officer. Uh, the vests that we have right now are old, uh, they need to be replaced. Um, so what this covers is it covers the carrier as well as the body armor insert and a ballistic helmet. So the thought would be is that each officer um, would have a gear bag that they would throw that in, that they would load with them each shift, in addition to any other gear bag that they load up in their car and then would be ready to respond uh, to an active shooter incident without having the concern of not having that extra protection. How many does that funding? One for each officer. Okay. When you say that they're old and need to be replaced, is there a shelf life on this? There is, yeah, so uh, five years. So we replace our current vest every five years. And it's the same shelf life for an active shooter? Correct, vessel. yes. You, you said for each officer, how many, how many officers would that be? We currently have 15. 15. Although we have one in the academy, that number pretty much constantly fluctuates, so yeah. So they're not overly expensive. No, actually, I was less surprised that it wasn't. I, I expected it was going to be more expensive than the prices came in. So, and that you know, I did include a five percent increase on that. I figure by the time the way that everything's going up, by the time that I'm actually able to purchase them, that the price would go up as well. So, all right, uh, number line item seventy nine is e citation ticket printers. So. Um, within the last couple of years, with Steve Schultz's help, we've been able to equip all of our patrol cars with updated uh, tablets, computer systems in our patrol cars. So uh, we're still using the outdated paper copies of tickets, which is very outdated. Not many agencies are doing that anymore. So uh, it just really helps with you know increasing accuracy, it eliminates legibility concerns, which is, a re which is a real issue because there's like five or six copies of the ticket and as that goes you know, into the fifth and sixth copy and those get pushed through to the courts, that becomes a problem when they can't read those. So it would really help with that. Uh, it's also increased officer safety and efficiency. Uh, instead of having your head down on a traffic stop and writing out a ticket, 
your head is now going to be up as you're looking at your tablet and you can keep an eye on on the uh, individual in front of you while you're uh, filling out the information on your on your tablet so what that is is it's just a it's it's a printer it's a small printer that gets mounted right inside of your patrol car you enter the information onto your tablet and then it prints out the ticket that you then hand uh, to the driver and it also will send a copy of the ticket right to district court which also is a huge advantage because oftentimes individuals that receive traffic citations will go right to the court to pay their ticket and they can't accept the payment because they don't have the ticket from the officer yet which typically doesn't come up until the next day Second, the legibility concerns issue, I'll tell you. Yes. <laughs> Cross your eyes. Yeah, it's. It's often that's not the officer's fault. Some of them have the Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, this would be a very welcome. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, the last one uh, was number 81, and I apologize. I'm not sure what happened with the uh, explanation there, but uh, I think Fire had this as well. So it's just an update of our physical fitness equipment in our gym. Uh, if you're those of you that are not aware, we have a beautiful gym upstairs at the public safety facility that's open to all city employees. Unfortunately, a lot of the equipment in that gym is from 1993 when the building went up. Um, it's outdated. Some of it is becoming borderline unsafe at times. Um, there's been equipment that's been donated and brought in that just doesn't last. It's not industrial type equipment like treadmills and things that we really need. It's time for an update. So, um, you know, Chief Edmonds and I and, and Kathy Himes have already started putting a work group together uh, to look at what needs to be moved out of there, what needs to be updated and what our priorities are as we move forward with that uh, weight room. It's, it's really important for us. Um, you know, Chief Edmonds and his fire personnel have a physical fitness program that they've implemented in their union contracts, which I'm also gonna be looking at for the police department. And without the appropriate equipment up there that falls back in the officers to potentially have to go out into the community and buy a gym membership, which would be really unfortunate when we have such a nice facility right at our own building. So we're just asking, um, you know, I believe Robbie, you had this as well, but we're each asking for some money each year to put into that facility, uh, not all at once, but just over time so we can update some of that equipment. Any questions? Hey, Eric or, or Shannon, um, did we put that or should that be under building maintenance? I'm wondering. Or did we I also have it? That's worth on it several times where you wanted to put it. So the officers and the firemen were here and then you were going to make a decision long term where to put stuff. In, in the past, fire has had 6,000 that we've had into it on our own. So this is the first time that we're actually sharing it. Eric's putting five in and Fire's putting five in, since our departments probably use it more than anybody else. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter to me as long as it's consistent. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the marina and building maintenance. I'll take it away. Um, at the marina, I have two new projects that I want to cover the center of the planning of the year. One of them is a two-year-old bridge tank supply line that run from the floor line out to the trucks at the end of the dock. Thank you. There's one section of the underground line that is, it's not bad, but the material is known to have issues and it's suggested by our contractor right now that we will be replacing it. So I do have it in the schedule for next year, but I will pursue a waterways grant for them to assist with that. Um, and additionally, uh, the marina parking lot way out in there, I have that to start resurfacing that into small chunks, trying to get that redone for us there. Um, everything else was things that was already part of the master plan that we've talked about in the past. Any questions? Um, in the building section, uh, not much new with the items that you see. Um, one thing that the, because the city hall windows, portions of that is going to be funded by our guests. Probably anything that is updated as far as things that we were going to have here. 
Um, fire and police, I finally got a good handle on what's going on at their building site so we understand what they need um, going forward. One of the big things that you're going to see in um, police is the squad room switch. I'd like to get that done this year. That's going to give us the ability to put a um, female locker room into the building a little bit easier by doing that switch right away. Um, in fire and in police, one of the things we're going to push for here right away is the paging system in the building is not real great at best. Um, if you're standing there, you really are trying to pay attention to which voice you should, should be listening to over the paging system because they do not page together right now across the speakers. So we're working on trying to fix that. Um, uh, the firemen have been trying to help me out. They've been researching what we need to do. Uh, those are probably kind of a couple of the bigger upgrades um, that we're looking at. If you have any questions, just let me know. Just a question regarding uh, the city hall itself, because it's been there for years. I don't know how many years when I was city manager and planner, replaced the city hall windows, and I see it's up for this coming year. Is there actually funding? Is that actually being looked at to do coming year, or is it? Oh, yeah. ARPA, we have ARPA funding for okay. about uh, half of it, is what it looks like. So we're hoping that general fund will fund the other half okay. of it. I know that was change out the I know that was always a priority, but it always got pushed back. Hey, we have a new kitchen at the fire department. Uh, <laughs> yes, we do. Thank you. So that's why we don't we have new chairs. Right. And we don't have a new chair. chairs. So it, we're making progress. <laughs> All right. Project number one. <laughs> Anybody want a break? <laughs> um, no, uh, we'll go through IT first, and I see I got a straggler project that it didn't get a number put in, so it's not in order, but it's number 38 under general. Um, it is an IT project. It's budgeting and transparency software. And talking a little bit with Anna on this, it's um, something that's going to work with our existing BSNA budgeting software to help us actually generate a budget without having to go through Excel and combine Excel and Word and all kinds of other files and just take hours and hours and hours of time uh, to do. So this will, this is going to kind of interact with our existing software as well as um, provide some transparency reporting and stuff that, that we get, you know, requests for all the time. And this is going to help, you know, go out and find those documents that we need to find and just give people reports that, you know, are already uh, um, kind of scrubbed for personal information and things that, you know, the public doesn't need, but this will give them, you know, what they what they need to see. And so it's a it's something that um, we found one particular uh, one that we like, but then there's others out there. So we're going to do a, a process and, and, you know, go through a, a request for proposals and see what else is out there. So that is that project, but that is IT. So we'll scroll down here. The only other new project per se is um, the website design and content management. Um, we have a current one right now, and it's uh, it's it's getting it's getting old. It's uh, there's some needs for some things, and there's tools that they don't have um, in their in their uh, pocket full of stuff. And, and I know there's better ones out there that we could look at. Um, they get more and more expensive the more tools you have, but um, I think it might be time for us to kind of look into something a little more a little more robust um, for us. Uh, one of the things that we have to do by hand right now is ensure all of the, the accessible content. We have to put in captions and things like that, and it's not a it's not a reminder. It doesn't pop up and tell us to do those things. So some of the newer software does that. It has some of that built right into it. And it says, oh, hey, you forgot to put a caption in for this picture. Or, you know, this, this PDF has some issues in it that doesn't make it readable. So um, just different things like that, that the, that type of thing would have. So we'll go through the, the bid process again and see what we can come up with on that. Um, everything else in IT is, is basically just uh, um, standard, you know, systematic replacements. Um, 
the BSNA cloud conversion was in there from last year, and that is uh, it's going to start with the building department. It's going to allow the building department to be able to take a uh, uh, just a tablet out and, and start putting in information, and they can actually look up things while they're out in the field. It's pretty tough to do that right now um, uh, to accomplish that. Well, but BSNA has come up with some some solutions for that, so um, we'll get into that too. But uh, everything else is pretty much standard through IT. There's any questions? Yes, I got one. Is that new uh, website design, we talked in the past about getting a system in place where people could sign up to either be messaged or text or something like that. From yeah. And I think that that was one of the holdbacks of the, the website just wasn't. Yeah, it's um, some of those things are, are a little bit clunky to figure out. Um, I, my intention would be to look at something like that that, that would improve our ability to do those things. Yeah. <clears throat> if there's no questions on that, we'll move on to equipment, and I'll just ask if there's any questions. Those are uh, items that in public works that have moved up through the ranks, and uh, we're going to start spending some money here. We've got we've got trucks that are old, we've got loaders that are old, and it's going to start hitting. Now, um, we're having trouble finding parts. We're having, you know, when, when things break, it's a long-term break. You're waiting for parts. You're, you know, there's there's just a lot of different things going on with them now. And um, it's just time that, you know, some of these things that they'd come up in the CIP and then we'd kick them out at budget time because they're easy, because they're high ticket, you know, they're high, high priced items. Um, we can't afford to do that too much longer, much like fire engine and stuff like that. So it's, it's a lot of the same. So we're gonna have to, um, just gonna have to purchase some of this stuff pretty soon. So, if there's any questions on that. How is the uh, equipment fund budget looking? It's actually pretty good. We're pretty. We've been doing having some discussion on it, and um, it's uh, it's grown. And we have we have sufficient funding to do some of that stuff. So it's it's good. Yeah. Steve, does the tractor we've leased? The other day, approved for lease. The other day, does that replace any of this? Is that is that what an articulate? No, it doesn't really replace anything. It's something that we've been doing for about three years now. Okay. You needed, and instead of buying it, you know, we we did the lease. So that's that's kind of what that is. But you know, we are looking into other lease options on some of the bigger equipment. Um, you know, that is always an option. So we just have to find the right place. Um, they some of the bigger equipment they don't do locally. So it's let's yeah. see. Next is cemetery. Not a whole lot of new things there. It's a lot of things moving back up on the scale. Every year our road resurfacing, since I can remember, is cut every year. But we're gonna we're gonna pave some roads in cemetery this year. <laughs> so, um, we're gonna get that done. Because uh, we've, we've got the money from this year, and hopefully, if our money moves through the CIP and goes through the budget process this year, we'll have back-to-back -back years where we can spend some dollars and uh, and make the road better. So, um, yeah, as a cemetery entrance, roadside improvements, we've we've been in discussion for quite a bit, quite a, a few different times with different folks, and we've got. Um, kind of started some discussion with a historic district committee um, and some people who are interested in you know some of the improvements uh, with the fencing and things um, along uh, in front of the cemetery and so we're gonna kind of start working on some of that stuff and kind of looking at you know what we can do to keep it relatively maintenance free but you know at least easier to maintain than the previous one was but still kind of keep the the look of the cemetery and that historic look. So we're, we got to kind of balance that. So, but we're going to start doing some of that this year. And that's all I have for cemetery. Um, lighting, this is a lot of projects that you see in here are, are here most every year. The newest one course is the downtown wiring replacement. Um, I know a lot of you have been 
I've received calls from a lot of different people on some lighting downtown, this light's flashing, these lights are out, and this and that, and whatever. And a lot of this has happened just due to the, the age of the wiring, and there's a lot of concrete work that has gone on downtown over the past few years. And so you go in and you, you cut a sidewalk ramp out and you replace it, and somebody's looking the other way and they just, you know, wire nut some wires that they cut back together. And so now we're dealing with this all underground. And so we we got with our, our contractor and they said to do some, some decent wiring downtown and replace the wiring uh, in kind, um, up with a little bit better plan. Uh, you're looking at around $100,000. We're gonna spread that across four years. Hopefully that gets the job done, um, but that'll get us a few blocks at a time and um, get us through and fix some of these issues that we have, seem to have every year. And that's all I have on lighting. Uh, real quick on lighting before you go, I guess. Huh? Talk to Rachel, I think so she feels the pain that the that the city has got like maybe now four different types of lights. We've got white, we've got yellow, we've got purple, we've got another shade of yellow. Um, is there anything is is anything in here is that citywide lighting efficiency improvements? Is there anything in here even short term that you plan on getting maybe getting everything the same? Over time. Now a lot of that is is just simply bulb color and you know availability and things like that. And so it's um it's something as we go through these um, improvements, you know, you've got the the LEDs and I don't know why, but it always seems that we have different lots and different colors. So um, you know, I'd like to get into some of that and, and see what we're buying versus you know uh, you know what we can do to buy either in bulk. Or get some of these changed out. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying here and there. We've got some of that. So some of that money that is just the citywide efficiency improvements would be would go towards some of that lighting, some of those purchases. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Parks. Um, the new big project that sticks out here is the Riverside Skate Park. Um, million dollars are out two years. Um, that was in hopes of us getting a Spark grant, um, which we were notified that we were not going to get. But there's two more rounds yet this year, and sounds like they um, maybe rushed the whole pro the whole process, and and maybe some descriptions weren't. Um, you know, completely thought out when they told us how to apply for the grants and what to do and descriptions and things like that. It sounds like they kind of want to retool that before they get out the second round. Um, but once they do that, well, we're going to apply again. You know, we'll we'll resubmit it. So, um, and that is uh, that's for the concrete version of the skate park. Um, the uh, the skate park group that I've been working with, along with the the rec board, um, all support. Um, having a new concrete park uh, by the by the water tower, and then moving the existing wooden park possibly to Mission Keyless is kind of the thought right now. It's a ways out, um, but uh, that's that's kind of the thought right now. You know, we've got some material to replace the boards uh, that need to be replaced in the springtime here at the existing skate park, and we're gonna at that time review what it might take to move those ramps. To another paved area over at Michikiwas, um, and that would be, of course, ahead of breaking ground on the new a new concrete park. Um, the people involved in our skate park group uh, are uh, very forthcoming with all kinds of information and contacts, and they they really feel that they can do some fundraising, some local fundraising for this and everything. So they're they're very excited about it. Um, and you know, we this is what they were going for in the very beginning when the, when this all started was a concrete park that everybody can skate on, bikes, skateboards, rollerblades, everything. Um, and that's that's kind of where we're headed right now. So we'll see how it all shakes out. That's what I have in parks. All right, 
Public Works. Um, this is uh, for the main uh, parking lots show up in here, parking lots around town. Um, and also some of the site over at DPW, the, some of the site work there. Um, and you'll see there's material storage building and uh, salt storage facility, things like that. Um, the new project is, is out there as a, a ways yet, but it's the overhead uh, cold storage doors um, out in the main storage areas out there that, that need, some, need some tender love and care. Um, and, uh, but we're, I mean, we're confident it's out far enough where, you know, it's, we're not going to lose them completely, but it, it's got to be start being considered and kind of move up each year, hopefully. And I know I've been here long enough when parking lot number one, City Hall, is on the docket for two years from now. <laughs> that was my first project that, as I, when I worked for the city. So I guess it's time. Major and local streets, um, not a lot to talk about there. It's a lot of uh, capital for end of maintenance. We've got some overlays, um, uh, just projects that have been been there. You've, you've seen them all before. Um, one of the things we started doing uh, is we're able now with uh, Charlie coming on board um, in engineering, he's uh, He's pretty bridge focused. He comes from that's what that's what his background is, and so we've actually actually have CIP items now for Second Avenue Bridge that are not just um, you know the major major projects. So we have little things that that we can be doing. So you'll see those pop up in here now. Uh, the Second Avenue Bridge electrical work and the routine bridge inspections. Um, they're all you know the inspections are required by the state. You know we have a five year one that cost eighty thousand dollars. That's required by the state. There's no in ifs, ands, or buts about it, and we have to do it. So that those those come up, and we've got to get those in the CIP to to make sure we have those covered each that they're needed. Um, other than that, not a lot of new projects, just projects that are moving up up each year. Um, things that we need to be doing. About third uh, and uh, Hobbs intersection. The third and Hobbs intersection is I th that that happens in Project 120, the intersection improvements. I think no, it doesn't. <clears throat> yeah. Thought that was going to be like three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, it's one hundred and fifty and one hundred and fifty. Yeah, it's one hundred and fifty one year and one hundred and fifty the next year. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Item one hundred and fifteen, Second Avenue, biannual routine bridge inspection. Yeah. Biannual, but it's only in there just for this. this year. <laughs> yep, it should be repeated. Missed that one, yeah. Is that every two years? Is that what biannual? Yeah. I just wanted to point it out. I don't know. Yep. Yep. No, it should. It should. We should double that up, or you know, each every two years. All right, and then. Uh, Moving on to water and sewer, we'll start with, let me see. Yeah, sewer, sewer projects within the city streets, um, nothing new showing up, but there's a lot of projects that we're wanting to get done. I, you know, the, the, these hit the budget, not all of them get planned and so then they get kicked back a year, kicked back another year, but um, we've got to show them uh, so that we have that demonstrated need. <laughs> a few new things at the water recycling plant. Um, 
small projects per se, methane gas, lift enclosure, um, water recycling plant security gates, um, out there a couple years yet. A lot of this, a lot of these plant related things, uh, Shannon does a lot of this work with, with uh, the managers over at the plants, comes up with these projects. Um, she's done a good job of uh, kind of planning some of this stuff and, and um, getting them honed down to a needs versus wants versus gotta haves. Um, so she's kind of helped them through that process. It was um, not a lot of hand holding before, and it, there's there's a little bit of that now, and then now they kind of know where they're headed with some of the stuff, and they they have their they have their list ready for her when she gets there. So it's pretty good, not too bad anyway. We're training them. <laughs> um, water distribution within the city streets, much of the same projects, just come up and get kicked back if we can afford them in the budget and um, handle them as best we can coming up in, in future years. Um, water production, got a few new projects there. First one replaced the plant supply line from, from the high surface pump. Um, if anybody's got any questions on these, Shannon has a lot of the details. Um, like I said, because she works with the guys, so. But if you got any other direct questions on projects. Is the, um, I'm just looking at water distribution. Is this on a rotation cycle? Is that how that works? The. Um, let's just say 188 line, there was a water valve replacement. And then below that, there's a number of streets and so on and so forth. Is that just rotational? Right. The water valve replacement is is something that we just put money in every year to do. We have a lot of valves that need that need work. Um, additional valves that we don't have. The, the, the way we used to put in valves years and years and years ago, it just wasn't enough. You can't isolate a whole block by you know, with the with the amount of valves that we were putting in intersections and so now you get to an intersection to pop in two new valves and you can't shut it down because one of the other valves is broken so now we're doing three instead of two and it kind of goes that way throughout the whole project so we we've decided that it's just more beneficial to just put money in every year and you know take a chunk out thank how you how many do you get for that thirty thousand a year four to five four to five and then of course you've got your your street projects, which also replace quite a few valves, you know, during you know during those projects. So that's good. On the water production, the, the clear well mm -hmm. wells, like uh, okay. two of them. Two of them. Uh, uh, have we applied for a grant yet, or is that planned for? We received money uh, through the state of Michigan, uh, six million. Oh, we received six months. See, well, we, we just got the grant agreement. We signed it and it's off. And we should be receiving half of that money at some point here. But we're, six, we're getting six million, we're getting? Nope, we're getting six million. So that'll basically, we just have to- We just have to another design them. Thousand. Just have to design them and yeah. Okay, well, that's good, really good. Because yeah, I know that's right. been a long- That was a, um, that was an appropriation. Direct appropriation. appropriation. It was a big item for quite a while. Yeah, no, it's it's good to have that that money, and, and it's good to be moving forward. In fact, just this this, this past week, we're um, advertising for the design. Great, good. That's kind of what I have. Unless there's additional questions. Anything, Steve, on long range? Yeah, those were mostly, if I remember correctly, those were mostly bridge related. Oh yeah, and then we've got some some of the major street stuff in there. The Huber Street, yeah, Prentice Street and Harbor Drive. Um Nothing, well, yeah, the, I guess these are new. Don't have the highlight turned on. I guess we figured that out, didn't we? Yeah. But, um, you know, the, the Long Lake, Long Lake Avenue bypass, that always kind of sits out there. 
No, I, I don't know. Yeah. It will happen. I know there's there's talk again about it there, folks. So we'll see. I don't know. Make sure you talk to the college. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, epoxy overlay on the second Avenue Bridge. Oh yeah, and the old 11th Avenue concrete repairs. Yep, that's all I have. Any other questions for anyone? I did put this on here. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate everything the staff put into this. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing, and uh, and some of the grant dollars and appropriations here have really stretched far. And hopefully, our new um, person, Lenny. Lenny, Rachel, that I have, I haven't. Heard. Yes, yeah. Lenny um, Avery. And he was uh, just went out today in a press release. I think that he was hired as the target, new target person who will also be facilitating our <laughs> our grant writing uh, opportunities. So that's going to be pretty cool. But thank you again, and I'll entertain a motion to approve the um, proposed CIP. So moved. Support. Second. I almost got her. Oh. I was this close. <laughs> Mike, it was mm -hmm. like that. The planning commission first. <laughs> Should be the yeah. planning. <laughs> planning commission's first. Yeah. Well, Sorry. Is that, that was, I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it just yeah. by accident? No, no it didn't. Yeah. Okay. You do have to. Right. 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 In that right. case. Yeah. I was just seeing if Greg was paying attention. I was looking at I was I was following that and I thought, well, okay. He's the mayor. I can't. All right. I will I will end it. Get a motion from my fellow planning commission members to uh, hopefully approve the uh, CIP as we have had it presented to us. I'll move. Make a motion that the, we accept the CIP as drafted and presented. I'll second. I'll second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Did you catch those? Um, I did. Van uh, Wagner. Thank you very much. All Sean Peterson seconded. Uh, just a comment it should include the any changes such as what you were going to do with the uh, the biannual inspection, right. yeah. mm -hmm. you know, modif necessary modification that should be included. The uh, by uh, to refresh everybody's memory, the biannual um, inspection hadn't been carried out every other year in the, in the planner. Steve uh, has indicated that he will insert that, so I'll amend my motion to include the uh, the amendment to. Uh, Correct that particular um, item in the uh, CIP. As long as everybody's okay with that, we have a motion and a second. And uh, Kathleen, would you call the roll, please? Gilmore? Yes. Moses? Yes. Boyda? Yes. Cobalts? Yes. Van Wagner? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sundin? Yes. Kostalek? Yes. Thank you for your experience and wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I've done way more than I, I probably ever I wanted to. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. move when we had one, so it didn't happen. So, uh, I'm going to a motion of the, similar to the Planning Commission. So moved. Who made that motion? Cindy? Cindy. Second. Cindy. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Johnson? Yes. Councilmember Mitchell? Yes. Councilmember Nowak? Yes. Councilmember Walchuk? Yes. And Mayor Walagora? Aye. Carried. No, it says we. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I move to adjourn. Support. Third. doesn't get to make many. <laughs> Third. We have our thing there, you know. <laughs> um, we're um, adjourned. You don't have to vote. No, no. Adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That was good.
Good job, Wait, you have three records. Yeah, that's coming up tomorrow. I commence for this because otherwise I would go a long range. Two hundred. Yeah. 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 Yeah